guys, it's Sam from Nonfiction Horror, and today's video is going to be a review on the video game The Evil Within number one. So I've had this game for a couple of years, but I really didn't get around to it until this past week. I can tell you guys I really, really enjoyed this game. I would rate it a good 8 out of 10, um, and I will list all the pros for the game, and then I'll get into the cons, why it didn't earn a solid 9 or a solid 10 for me. So basically this game, I would say, would be considered a survival horror video game which is my favorite game to play of all time um this one was really reminiscent of the resident evil series i would say because it did feel like there was a lot of shooting involved as opposed to other games where maybe there is a little bit more of a psychological type thriller involved in it it did seem like there was in addition to the actual gameplay a good amount of shooting but it wasn't just an over gratuitous amount of shooting zombies and aliens where you're just constantly just loading clip after clip after clip it wasn't necessarily like that which i enjoyed which is why i said it's kind of reminiscent of resident evil as opposed to like a call of duty just shooter game in its own so you follow the main character his name is sebastian and he is a detective and he and along with his partner a doctor kind of go to this crime scene where everything was happening they get a call and they go there and then they find this surviving patient that was the only patient that survived in this hospital psych ward type thing and then it kind of follows them and they're basically just follows the main character and you meet up with the other people along the way because they kind of get broken up into groups because all this chaos ensues when it's like this end of the world type it's a really weird unrealistic setting um but you know you kind of just go with it in video games but Bottom line, I really did enjoy this game. The pros of this game, it was really fun to play. I really loved the characters that they had. I do feel that they really were kind of quite frightening on their own for being a horror game. I felt that even though I know this kind of genre on its own can get really overproduced in terms of monsters. I mean, you can only make so many monsters look so scary and make them look all unique across all platforms and all games. I felt this one did have a little bit of that uniqueness in terms of the characters that some of them were a little bit I don't know, the, the settings or like the landscapes where you were, some of the areas were very just kind of like trippy. They were reminiscent almost of like in some there would be eyeballs all over the place some of them you were inside like looks like a brain or body organs and stuff like that so it was kind of cool setting even though like i said the whole story really didn't make sense why you were in these weird warped worlds but you kind of just went along with it um Overall, I really liked the gameplay of it. I felt, for me, it was quite easy to play. I started off playing on the highest difficulty, but it was almost impossible to play the game because something that would normally make you lose health, you would end up just dying. For example, if a monster hit you, you would die as opposed to having some sort of like fighting interaction to kind of save yourself. So I switched from the hardest difficulty to like normal play and it was a breeze ever since then um so i do feel the reason that i gave this game an 8 out of a solid 9 or a solid 10 was because the game involved 15 chapters and i do feel like the game could have been easily tied up with 13 chapters and it would have been a flawless game i just felt the last end of it took forever and it was just a little bit kind of was like i was over the game at that point not because it wasn't good but i was just like can we finish this already i've gone through so much and the boss fight at the very end was so anticlimactic that that's kind of also why i docked a couple points just because i felt like there were so many bosses throughout the games that were not only harder to beat but more mentally stimulating because i mean the cool thing about this game was that there were multiple ways to win there wasn't just like one constant like go-to reference that if you shot him in the head 19 times he would die sometimes you could get away from a boss by sneaking and just throwing a grenade and then that would explode against a gallon of gasoline and he'd explode and die so i mean it didn't always have to be the exact same way he could you know you could beat him so that was kind of fun i will say that towards some of the bosses at the end of the game i did have to kind of use cheats which i try not to i give a boss about a good solid i want to say honestly if i'm being honest i give it about an hour to two hours of me trying and me trying and me trying and failing that i'm like okay maybe i'm just missing something crucial to this boss that i could be beating him so much easier so i do go online and kind of just type in uh like we'll say chapter seven chainsaw boss and then there's tons of videos on youtube that will show you little things that i didn't even notice 
didn't think of on my own or just made my life so much easier. There were so many bosses that I killed in like three minutes and others I killed in like three hours. So it really, some are easier than others and you kind of just had to press your luck. But that kind of made it more fun too. Everything was a challenge and things were constantly being thrown at you. Um, another cool thing about this game that I enjoy, which made it maybe not so much of a shooter game, but more of like, uh, survival horror was that you didn't have unlimited ammo so you really just kind of had to pick up a couple rounds here a couple rounds here you had to use your knife little things like that to kind of get you to help beat these little tiny thing tiny bosses along the way which was nice because I feel like sometimes when you have unlimited ammo and just kind of like he's unloading clip after clip after clip then the game's not really hard but if you only have you know two bullets left and he you have, your your health is low and you have to try to beat him you have to get a little bit more creative and use your surroundings around you whether that be, that be like I said the gasoline or you explode it and then it blows up or maybe there is a bear trap that you have to make him walk over so he gets hurt little things you kind of like I said have to get creative with which I really enjoy because it just did kind of make it more of a strategy based game which I love when there's strategy involved and puzzles and kind of have to work things out on your own so like I said, I did rate it an 8 out of 10. I did enjoy it. I would play this game again. In fact, today I kind of wanted to restart it because when you finished it, it gave you like a whole bunch of points that you can go in and redeem to make your character a little bit better. Meaning you could upgrade and keep upgrading and keep upgrading his loot, I guess you could say. Sometimes he could only carry a gun with five bullets, then you could upgrade to seven, to 10, to 15, 20, etc., etc. So you could make him a lot more equipped. So it would make your gameplay a lot easier. So I highly recommend you guys check out The Evil Within. If you kind of like a cross between Resident Evil um, and a Resident Evil game base, but not too alien. It also wasn't 100% Silent Hill, but it did have, like I said, the characters in there really did kind of make it a little bit more of a creepy experience in terms of like they weren't just a zombie which to me isn't so scary some of these were really menacing characters that kind of were if you feel like if you saw them in real life you're just it's done you're done these guys will immediately kill you so I do look forward to playing the evil within too I know that's been out for maybe about a month or so I do want to play that but I'm probably going to play the South Park the fractured butthole probably next just to kind of I don't know something lighthearted but then I intend to go back to play the evil within I have heard about a horror game called agony which it's supposed to have been released but I think they keep pushing it back and it's supposed to be I think across all platforms pretty soon Xbox uh, PlayStation all that kind of stuff that game looks absolutely brutal 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 uh, that game just like I've seen the gameplay from like the beta testing that they've done on it. That's a trip. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the Agony video game. Like I said, they kind of are really not explain. They're not really saying when the release date is, so I really don't know. But I do know it's being made, and it's going to be on the PlayStation, and you can buy it in GameStop, all that kind of stuff. I just I don't know when the release date is at this point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go ahead and leave some links around if you wanna go see my top survival horror video games. That is my favorite thing to play. If you guys have any recommendations, I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you for watching, bye.